to memory networks which are also known as content addressable memory networks so first one given here is auto associative memory in these type of networks the output vector will be always seen as input vector so now obviously the question will arise if input and output vectors are going to be same then what's the use of network here so the task of network here is to determine the weights according to the given input and it will store the patterns accordingly so now if any distorted or incomplete pattern comes then this network will be able to recall the the original pattern with the help of stored information now as an example of this auto associative memory network we have hope field network which we will see later on so first of all let us see how this network works so now in training phase we have been given with input pattern and we have to determine the weight so here we have to do nothing more just take the transpose of given input pattern and then multiply both the matrices now for the testing phase whatever weight we have obtained from training phase it will be multiplied with the transpose and if we obtain our original input pattern then the network works correctly otherwise it contains some error now the second one given here is hetero associative memory now this network is also same as auto associative memory but the only difference is input and output vectors will not be same so as we had seen in example of auto associative memory it was used for the application of finding the original pattern from some distorted one but this particular type of memory finds the associated or related pattern of some given input now both of these were the type according to memory but if we consider the architecture then memory networks can be classified as linear or bidirectional so the first one linear model this linear model is a type of single feed forward network which contains only two layers which means input is directly given to the output layer along with some weight so mathematically this model can be interpreted as the equation mentioned here so w is the strength of connection between any node i and j p is the total input and q is the total output now let us move on to bidirectional auto associative memory so here we have been given with some input pattern which contains yellow and blue dots but here we are concerned with only blue dots which form this inverse triangle so here our first task is to convert this input pattern into some decoded matrix how to decode it here we are concerned with only blue dots so let us consider yellow as 0 and blue as 1 so from here we will move downwards keeping all the values into the matrix so first one here it is yellow one so we kept a 0 then second again in yellow so we get 0 then here are two blue dots so we kept two ones there after two zero and finally a one now this decoded input pattern is multiplied with target pattern which we have been already given so after this multiplication of two matrix we will obtain some weight now this weight whatever we have obtained it is for a single type of pattern multiple patterns will be given like this so weights for all will be calculated and it will be finally summed up and after the summation of this weights comes end of our training phase now for testing purpose whatever weight we have obtained from training phase we have to multiply it with the given input pattern which we have decoded thereafter activation function is applied if we get the target pattern as output then the network works correctly it has been trained correctly otherwise it contains some error now we will see a special case of these networks brain state in a box basically this network is a non linear auto associative type of memory but with two or more layers it can also work as hetero associative this type of network is always fully connected and generally nodes here depend on dimensions of input dimensions of input like 
bed size or number of steps or number of features whatever we are preferring etc and one more characteristic is nodes in this network always assume bipolar values and they are updated simultaneously as we had seen in goldsman machine now for activation purpose this network use ramp function then changes in state of any node is given by this equation so here wij is the strength of any connection between node i and j xjt it is the state of any node j at time t and finally weights from any node either from i to j or j to i are updated by this given equation so this vpi is the training pattern associated with ith node similarly training pattern associated with jth node and this p is the number of overall training patterns which again are always in bipolar nature